Ask any video game boss and they'll tell you that the most dangerous enemy is the playable character because they get all the weapons, healing items and the ability to retry if they mess things up. Two, one, zero. Usually this works in your favour, but sometimes characters that you've played as in previous instalments of the series come back, having taken a wrong turn on Hero Street before ending up in Villain Alley by the bins, where they want to have a fight with you, the new protagonist of their series. We've talked about this topic before, but it keeps happening, folks, so until these ex-heroes get themselves together, it's time for seven more heroes who lived long enough to become the villain, and then tried to kill you. Enjoy and watch out for spoilers for the following games. It's not easy being Luigi. For a start, your brother gets all the fame, accolades and fun platforming games, and when you do finally get to star in your own series, it's about you getting murdered by ghosts. And even then, your brother can't stay out of things and turns up to make you look like an idiot. In your own game! Let's go! Oh, f off, Mario. So you can see why Luigi is a prime candidate for turning to the dark side. And it happens in Super Paper Mario for the Wii, where Luigi adopts the villainous alter ego, Mr. L. I mean, I think it's Luigi. It's such an incredible disguise, it's hard to tell. Hey. Amazingly, despite all the provocation, this isn't actually a willing heel turn from Green Mario, but rather a result of brainwashing from the game's actual villain, Count Black. Still, that doesn't stop Luigi, sorry, Mr. L, nearly gave the game away there, from crashing the party and attempting to throw down with his, as established many, many times across the Mario canon, much more capable and talented brother. Obviously being Luigi, he's still pretty much a pushover, or at least he is up until he climbs into a massive, flight-capable mech of his own face, at which point things get a little more interesting. <laughs> As the game progresses, you do manage to clear the brainwashing and get Luigi back, a rare bit of good news for Luigi fans, which lasts right up until the final boss battle. Where he gets brainwashed again and merges with a mystical MacGuffin called the Chaos Heart to become a giant, terrifying clown puppet with a weird Luigi face. See, Luigi, this is why you can't be trusted with the platform games. <coughs> As long as I have breath in my body, my fate is my own. There are two playable characters in Shadow of Mordor and its sequel, Shadow of War. Those characters are Talion, a human ranger, and Celebrimbor, an elf ghost. They do, however, share a single body, which potentially makes going to the bathroom awkward. You are banished from death. Cast adrift between the worlds of light and dark. Curse binds us together within the walls of Arda. While Celebrimbor is a grumpy jerk who forged the rings of power that caused all this Sauron mess in the first place, Talion is a noble and honourable dude who goes through almost literal hell and back to defeat the Nazgul Isildur before taking his ring of power for safekeeping. Isildur, I release you! No, no, no! Find peace in death.
After a messy breakup with Celebrimbor, Talion is forced to put on Isildur's ring to stay alive, and unlike most people who get their hands on a ring of power, Talion doesn't immediately go mad and evil, instead resisting the ring's power for decades, giving Gondor time to prepare for the coming war with Mordor. Only then does he go mad and evil, which is a major problem for you in the Shadow of War DLC, Blade of Galadriel. <sighs> the ring. You told me once when the time came you would do what is needed. In Blade of Galadriel, you play as the elf Eltariel, who notices that after all this time with one of those corrupting rings of power, Talion is starting to look, what's the word? Corrupty? Yes. <laughs> of course. Right, can I have the ring though? Because it looks like you're just wandering off. Oh no, he's monologuing. Such a little thing. Why should I give it? Yep, turns out that even a hero like Talion can only take so much ring influence before he starts to go all golemy. And we get to witness Talion's transformation into the ring wraith that will take Isildur's place at Sauron's right hand. This ring is mine. And Talion is no more. We see this in Shadow of War too, but it's in the DLC where as Altariel you have to actually throw down with Nazgul Talion, who it must be said is a right cheaty bastard. Hey Talion, this stuff is only cool if it's us doing it to the AI, not the other way around. All right, if he starts cheesing us by kiting us around the walls and then stabbing us in the back, I'm turning it off. That's my tactic, damn it. Splatoon is a charming, often baffling game in which trendy squid children fight to cover the largest amount of the floor in ink. Reckless abandon that can only mean they are 100% confident that they don't have to clean it up. In it, you play as Agent 3, an inkling who can transform into a squid form who is recruited by Captain Cuttlefish to rescue the great Zapfish, the source of power for the city of Incopolis. You do this by, well, by covering the floor with ink, mostly. It seems to work, though. The sequel, Splatoon 2, got a new protagonist, but that wasn't the last we saw of Agent 3. They popped up again in the Splatoon 2 DLC known as the Octo Expansion. And if you've been paying attention to this video so far, you can probably guess what their deal was this time. That's right, Agent 3 is now a baddie, thanks to a hypnotising telephone that has brainwashed them into using their inky powers for evil. They're also significantly more powerful than they were when we were in charge, which is, according to Marina and Pearl, due to the fact that they've removed their limiter. Something I guess isn't an option when we're playing. Thanks, Splatoon. Anyway, I don't remember Agent 3 being this fast or deadly or able to do quite as many splashdowns in a row when I was playing as them. All seems rather unfair if you ask me. Okay, yeah, this is much more like my Agent 3 experience, particularly the bit where I get covered in ink while unconscious. What the? <laughs> I knew you weren't really gone. So he's finally back. The Dragon of Dojima. The protagonist of the majority of the Yakuza series of open-world crime games, Kiryu Kazuma is a man who is so good at fighting that he can't even casually enter a room without knocking someone unconscious. I can't stress enough just how supernaturally good at fighting Kiryu is. His only other skill that even comes close is karaoke, although to be fair, he might be even better at that. Kiryu 
series' last Yakuza game as the playable character was 2018's Yakuza 6. Yakuza 7, known as Like a Dragon in the West, introduced a new playable character, Ichiban Kasuga, who has a somewhat different approach to fighting based on his love of turn-based RPGs like Dragon Quest. I pretend I'm a hero when I fight, so what? When it's time to throw down, my brain just starts thinking in Dragon Quest terms. That doesn't mean Kasuga is bad at fighting, however. Far from it, in fact, as his overactive imagination allows him to dream up some awe-inspiring offensive moves that might be even more powerful than Kiryu's arsenal of punches and kicks. <laughs> might be. Like I said, he is very good at fighting. Anyway, you get to find out exactly how Kasuga stacks up as a protagonist later on in Yakuza Like a Dragon, where the thing blocking you from proceeding in the main story is Kiryu himself. Alright. Time for seconds! This feast ain't over till it's over! Kiryu hasn't technically turned evil because, as we all know, Kiryu is an incorruptible soul who is physically incapable of doing the wrong thing. He just wants to find out if Kasuga and Ko are worthy of the information he has and the way he can gauge their worth is by fighting them. Unfortunately for you, I've always used my fists to get to know someone. There has got to be a better way of phrasing that, my dude. So, the way things are now, Kiryu is the next villain that must be vanquished in Kasuga's hero's journey, a fight that's probably not going to go super well for you if Kiryu's reaction to Kasuga's first punch is anything to go by. You wanna die? Step up! And yes, Kiryu absolutely lives up to his reputation and what we know of him, having played as him for six main series games and a prequel, in that he hits like a freight train, is very, very difficult to hurt in any significant way, and switches through his four different fighting styles, each of which can wreck you with a quickness. <laughs> Then, as if that wasn't enough, he transforms into a literal dragon. Which, now that I think about it, is probably just Kasuga's overactive imagination again, isn't it? Ichiban. Hey, come on. There's only one way to settle this once and for all. Karaoke off. See you down there, Kiryu. And here we are, back where it all started. I was so worried that you weren't going to live through the blast. But you were fine. More than fine, actually. I remember your voice now. You were there after the bomb went off. Most of the playable characters in this list wait until a later game, or at least some DLC, to turn evil and try to kill you. But not Cole McGrath from Infamous, who does it in his own game. That is efficient. Okay, Moya, what now? The story of Infamous follows Cole, a bike messenger who looks like someone chose all the default options on a character creator and called it a day, and who gets electric superpowers from an explosion, which I suppose is as good a reason as any. Blamed for causing the explosion, Cole has to use his new powers to try and clear his name, and it soon becomes apparent that the real bad guys here are a secret society known as the First Sons, and their shadowy leader, a hooded figure known as Kessler. He leaped toward me, his icy fingers digging into my head. He seems nice. Like Cole, Kessler has electrical powers that make him a dangerous foe. They're also about the same height and build, and they sound similar too, actually, now that I think about it. I've always been there, Cole. Every step of your life. See, that's because Kessler and Cole are actually the same person. In Kessler's timeline, a dangerous supervillain called the Beast started wrecking things up, and instead of using his powers to stay and fight, that version of Cole fled with his family, a selfish move that left civilization all but destroyed. Hunted for years, Kessler and his family watched as the rest of the world went to hell. And then it was too late. Too late to fight. Too late to save anyone. 
Having been around for a lot longer, Kesla also has access to powers your coal doesn't have, including one-way time travel, which he used to travel back in time with the aim of moulding his younger self into a hero who could stand against the beast when the time came. That's instead of, say, finding the baby beast and hurling him into the ocean, but hey, whatever, it's your plan, Kesler. My brain lurched, unable to accept that Kessler and I were the same person. That he'd come back in time to mould me into the saviour he failed to be. For some reason, the final part of this plan is Kessler full-on trying to murder you, which is bad news because he's got access to every power that you do, plus a whole bunch more that he learned during his extra years. They're all a lot more powerful than anything you can muster up with your level 1 scrub hero powers, especially the one where he electrocutes you in the face. You're weak, a failure. All of this has been for nothing. But oh, hey, Cole has something Kessler doesn't have. The power of friendship, as exemplified by his best friend Zeke, who's here to help. This doesn't concern you, fat man. <laughs> oh, okay, new plan, Cole. Cut your own head off and see if Kessler falls off as well? Contra was a side-scrolling shoot-em-up for the NES in which you play as a commando who apparently had to choose between a shirt and a gun when leaving the house this morning. The two playable characters are called Bill Riser and Lance Bean. And going by the cover, I'm going to say that Bill is the looking straight ahead Arnold Schwarzenegger from Predator, whereas Lance is the looking to the side Arnold Schwarzenegger from Predator. Anyway, judging by the original Contra, Bill and Lance are the best of buddies, trusted comrades and as similar as two peas in a pod. And not just because they're recoloured versions of the same sprite. All that changed, however, in 2002's Contra Shattered Soldier, in which we learn at the start of the game that Bill Riser is in cryogenic prison after being blamed for almost blowing up the planet, and more importantly, murdering his former partner Lance Bean, who actually died, tragically and romantically, in Bill's arms. Five years after he's frozen, however, Bill is thawed out to help the Earth's government deal with a terrorist organisation called Blood Falcon, led by a mysterious superhuman commander. Presumably, at some point in the years since the original Contra, Demolition Man took over from Predator as Konami's favourite movie. The bad news for you is that Blood Falcon really put the terror in terrorism due to their expansive roster of horrible bioengineered monsters with human faces that you're going to have to fight. At least you get a shirt this time. The biggest surprise about Blood Falcon, however, is their leader, who is actually a very much alive Lance. He also has some clothes now, but they are, regrettably, straight out of the fascist spring summer collection. Still looks like we're going to get the Bill vs Lance head-to-head -head fight that fans have been dreaming of ever since the first Contra game. Finally, we'll find out who's the better commando. I mean, unless Lance sends in a horrible bioengineered monster with a human face to do the fighting for him. <sighs> I'm not angry, Lance. I'm just disappointed. You're your own man. I'm Big Boss. And you are too. No. He's the two of us together. Where we are today, we built it. This story, this legend, it's ours. We can change the world and with it the future. I am you and you are me. Carry that with you wherever you go. Thank you, my friend. From here on out, you're a big boss. 
we talked previously about how Metal Gear Solid 3's protagonist, Naked Snake, goes on to become the villain in Metal Gear 2. But a similar situation exists for the protagonist of Metal Gear Solid 5, because Hideo Kojima is on a one-man quest to create the most convoluted and complex chronology possible. Succeeding, also. In Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, you play as Venom Snake, a supremely capable field operative and mercenary with access to a truly breathtaking variety of weaponry, gadgets, and allies. These include inflatable, fully voiced decoys, a Fulton extraction device that can punch a hole through space-time, a rocket-powered prosthetic arm, and of course, a backup sniper who can turn invisible. However, the game in which you actually have to fight Venom Snake isn't Metal Gear Solid V, but rather 1987's Metal Gear for the MSX and Nintendo Entertainment System, where Venom Snake, in his guise as the decoy big boss, is the game's final combat encounter. Metal Gear 1 is set 11 years after Metal Gear Solid 5, because Hideo Kojima, and in the intervening time it seems that Venom Snake has forgotten almost every bit of his combat training and lost all of his gadgets and equipment. Still got a fondness for giving his subordinates stupid nicknames, however. He has gone full on evil though, stealing military intelligence and planning to use the nuclear capable bipedal weapons platform Metal Gear to bring society to its knees and establish himself as ruler of the world's new top superpower. Luckily for you, Venom Snake, aka the decoy big boss, having forgotten all his stealth training, is now reduced to sprinting around the screen, stopping behind boxes, and occasionally firing a handgun when he remembers he has it. He is pretty easily and unceremoniously beaten on account of how at this point you have a rocket launcher, and then, presumably, is put beyond hope of a dramatic comeback by the massive explosion that destroys the base soon after. I mean, I, I guess he could have survived if… Okay, never mind. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe and click that little bell notification icon to be notified every time we upload a video. It super duper helps us out. And if you'd like to be a real hero, you can watch these other two videos that are on the screen now. There's one up here from us on Outside Xbox and one down there from our sister channel, Outside Extra. Thank you so much again for watching and we'll see you next time.